beautiful day. I love this weather. It's uh, amazing. I was here uh, in 1985. Not here, but in Worcester. And uh, it's interesting because I was a young guy that uh, was competing in the first world championship. Um, and uh, I made third. And you know when, when you, it's a, a happy event happened to you, you start connecting all the things that go along with it, you know, the people, the trees, everything. And so when I came last night, as soon as I got out of the airport, I felt the same way I felt, what, 15 years ago? It's amazing. It's like time doesn't exist. I was not all, always a, 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 I was not born with the ability and the gift to become Mr. Universe. Uh, far from it. When I was 19 years old, I weighed 108 pounds. All of my sisters were basically bigger than, than me. Uh, low self-esteem, poor. When you have, when you think you have a low, low esteem, is you're projecting this upon others. So my thing was, I'm skinny, you can beat me up. Um, all the lunch uh, boxes that my mom was preparing, I really never had one because I would automatically deliver them to the bullies. On certain days, I would go back with home with one shoe, without a jacket. Um, certain instances, I would be, you know, put in a in the bathroom. They'll close the door and they tell me not to move. I would stay there for eight hours, seven, eight hours, until the janitor finds me. All the good things that uh, a kid with low self-esteem would go through. So I decided to protect myself, and I developed a ritual, a crying ritual. After school, I go home, go to my room, which I was uh, um, sharing with seven or eight other siblings. I would sit there, and it, it's like someone was telling me deep inside of me, your only option is to cry until you remove all that stress that you've been through the day. So I would cry. Cry. It would last 10 minutes, 20 minutes. And I would go play with my siblings and feel great about myself. The only moments I felt great about myself is when I was with my siblings, my sisters and brothers. So that was a ritual that uh, I really never gave up that ritual. It's also called meditation. I didn't know I was meditating. I really didn't know. But it required for me to go within. I was crying for five, ten minutes. I would think about how poor my low self-esteem was, how I was, uh, you know, uh, sadness in general. But then it, it, it took... A life in its own. It became meditative. One day, I came back home. I was about to go to do my ritual. Everybody was watching a program on television. I remember all my life. This is what changed my life. I walk in the house, drop my bag, and see that everybody's watching this program. And this guy on TV is doing the Iron Cross. Perfect body, a gymnast. Perfect body. What was I subconsciously asking myself all along? Why am I not healthier? Why am I not bigger? Why don't I have a girlfriend like everyone else? 19 years old, no girlfriend. That's a problem. I have a five-year-old boy. He's got two girlfriends. <laughs> and the answer was right in front of me. I looked at this guy, and I fell in love. I'm going to write it down there. Fell in love 
If it's not correct, please correct me. I'm French. So, when I fell in love, what happened? What do you do when you fall in love with someone? Don't tell me you never fell in love because I don't believe you. What happened? You become stupid. <laughs> you become so stupid that you'll do everything it takes to be with the person you love. Everything it takes to be with the person you love. Why is that so? We forgot that we had a guidance process. That all the questions we have, we have an answer. If only we went back in here to get the answer. When I saw that gymnast, I asked myself, why not me? And the answer was an excitement. There's two feelings we can feel, right? Don't tell me there's two million feelings. I don't believe it. There's two feelings. One, you feel good, which is excitement. Two, you feel bad, which is anxiety. What happened when I saw this gentleman? I felt an amazing excitement. When you feel an excitement, it's so powerful, you have a desire. It's not just a desire, but a true core desire. A true core desire. I won't trick you a bit. <laughs> true core desire. You see with your eyes or your brain? With your brain. We don't see with our eyes. The eyes are connected to the brain, and then the information is filtered by the subconscious mind. So what happened is that I immediately, I saw the picture, it went into my brain, and it mingled with the information there. The sadness, the, the low self-esteem, and the answer was, yes, I can't become like that. So what happened when you fall in love with somebody? You anchor the information from the subconscious to the, from the conscious to the subconscious. It takes usually a while to do that. But when you fall in love and you have a true core desire, it happened instantly. When you have that, you know what happened? You start behaving in a way that is leading you to directly to your goal. If only you keep the image of that desire in the screen of your mind. Now, I want to become like this. What do I do? So I start going to the library. I start asking questions. Next thing I know, I find out myself getting a membership at a gymnastic club. Okay? That's called an, a, a, an appropriate plan, right? Only to find myself breaking all kind of bones. I was 109 pounds. What do you do in a gymnastic club at 109 pounds? They make you jump right, left, you know, and before you know it, you know, and I was hurt and won't tell them because I want to belong. You know, I had that picture. I broke my wrist in competition. I didn't want to tell nobody because I wanted to see to become like that.